Mohammad Asan Ayaz. Um, I am currently working as a software architect at Modus Create. This is a company based in US, so I work from home. Um, almost 90% of the people who are working in the company work from their homes. There are around 200 employees, so you can calculate the numbers. I'm also a Google developers expert in Angular and web technologies, and that means that Google itself uh, believes in me and my expertise, so they have acknowledged me uh, by taking several tests, so there's a whole procedure that you have to go through, like um, you have to have different interviews and some, some questions, and they analyze you based on the impact that you create. And the reason I'm talking about how, uh, you know, what a GDE is, is because I actually want you know, most of you guys to apply for it in the future, and I can also talk about how you can prepare for becoming a GDE, because there are a lot of uh, opportunities out there, not just in web category, there is a category of Android, Flutter, Google Analytics, and you can also become a GDE, and there are a lot of benefits of being a GDE. Like, I get to talk with the people who are actually creating Angular. Like, I get to talk to the uh, Angular team, the features come to us early and we get to give feedback on that, we get to test things, we get to talk to different people who are also experts. So if you have an idea that you're working on right now, maybe you have an idea of a library. So who are you going to collaborate with? Maybe your friend or something, but you can also collaborate with an expert and build something bigger. So uh, if anyone has any question regarding that, um, just reach me out after the session. I'm also running, uh, I'm also a co-organizer of Angular Pakistan, which is a community that focuses on Angular and it promotes Angular. It tries to provide the information in the Angular world to, uh, to here in Karachi. I'm also running Node School Karachi, which is a community based in, um, you know, based around Node.js and JavaScript. We did not have an event for quite a while now, but we are planning for uh, May that we would have an event, or maybe June if there were some issues with Ramzan. Okay, uh, I'm also a part of DevonCode. How many of you know about DevonCode? Okay, so quite a few people. DevonCode is a community which basically supports different communities. If you have an idea uh, of building a community, DevonCode can help you. Uh, the community can provide you different venues like this one. Uh, the community can also help your community grow by providing different volunteers. The community also provides opportunities to new speakers that you can come up and speak. Uh, they can also provide you mentorship, like reviewing your slides, uh, how you speak, suggestions on based of that. So if you are really into speaking, uh, you should be in contact with someone from DevonCode. You can find me uh, on Twitter at sn underscore ayz. Uh, ayaz mujhe nahi mil tha, obviously. So uh, don't try to reach me out on Facebook. That's considered harassment. You all know that. <laughs> hai. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach me on, uh, on LinkedIn. So I will be sharing these slides, and uh, probably someone from JS Drive will also share that. So you can reach me out on LinkedIn. I reply uh, people every day. So uh, if you are reaching me out, um, I'll reply you in, in, uh, in like 24 hours. Okay. Um, I've talked a lot about Angular. JavaScript, so you can see all of that on slides.com. I'll share the link as well. If you want to see my work on GitHub, um, there's the link of that as well. I've contributed to Angular CLI official project. I've also contributed to Ionic Core. If anyone is working on Ionic, uh, my code is in your machine right now. Um, I've also uh, created different libraries. One of my libraries is NGX Device Detector, which has around a million downloads uh, at the moment. It was created, I think, um, one year ago. So it has above 30,000 downloads a week. Um, let's get to PEWA, enough about me. So what is a progressive web app? Let's talk about that first, and then we'll talk about what is a desktop PWA. So progressive web apps are basically installable. That is the first property of that, okay? You don't have to go to any app store. You don't have to go to Play Store. Progressive web apps are downloadable from your browser, and most of the browsers are now supporting that, so you can install a web application right into your device, okay? So if you are using, let's say, an Android phone, you will have the apps icon on your, uh, your launcher, your app drawer, and you can click on it, and it will give you a feel of a native app. Well, it's actually not, but it's a progressive web app. The PWS are discoverable, which means that you can easily Google it, and then a PWA for something can appear for you. So it is optimized for search engines. It is also optimized for you to find it. 
Apart from search engines, discoverability also means that since you have the application in your mobile or on your device, you can easily go to your launcher and can or you can just search for your application with your phone and you should be able to find that. Okay, so the PWA is also discoverable within your devices as well. You can search for it. So it also provides you offline storage, which means that if you have no connectivity or low internet connectivity, the app should still behave really good for the end users and the end user may not see the difference. That is also one possibility, but most of the times they will see something, but a possibility of offline usage of your entire application is there. Um, for instance, if you have used Facebook, uh, there may have been several times that you have scrolled through different, um, different pages or different profiles and suddenly the internet goes off. Now when you open the app again, you should be able to see what you browsed earlier, but not anything new. So that's how a native app feels like and progressive web apps should be similar. They are engaging, which means that you can interact with your uh, customers every now and then. So progressive web apps feel like native apps. That's why users are immersed into the experience and, and they don't feel the difference of native versus a web app mostly. And they are engaging because, for instance, if you have an app like Food Panda, you can send push notifications to a progressive web app, which means it's not a native application. You are not going through Google Cloud Messenger or FCM or APN, but you can send web push notifications to the end users via being a progressive web apps. Okay, and that all happens behind the scenes by using service workers. This talk is not about getting uh, in depth into how service worker works or how push notifications are implemented, but it's rather about uh, letting you guys know what is the possibility of PWAs and how it's going towards desktop, okay? Just raise your hand whenever anyone has a question. They should be responsive. For instance, if you are talking about applications being installed into different devices, that means that every device should adapt the view. So the app should be responsive. If you are opening in, uh, it on a tablet, if you are opening it on a desktop um, browser, if you are opening it on a mobile phone, it should look really great on every device. That's why it would feel like a real app. And it's app-like. I've been saying that a lot. So the experience of PWA is app-like because when you open the PWA, you will not see the Chrome's address bar at the top. You will see what an app feels like, like the status bar, the app theme, and stuff like that. If you are opening a PWA on desktop, we'll see how that looks, but going forward. Okay, so there's a concept called FIRE, which is used a lot with progressive web apps. So the progressive web apps are supposed to be fast, which means if there is low internet connectivity or no connectivity, they would still be fast. The application load time would drastically be, be fast because of something that we call app shell. How many of you know about app shell? One, two, very good. So app shell is basically a way to show the user your application before even JavaScript triggers. So before even JavaScript compiles, like if you have a React application or an Angular application or any other framework. So to, to be able to show the UI to the user, the app has to be compiled, right? So it will open on the browser, then the JavaScript would kick in, and then after certain things, the UI would be built. But App Shell allows you to show a dummy application just with the static content right away whenever you are opening the app. Thank you. So, so that's how it works. Then we have integrated, which means that it feels like a native app. It feels like a desktop app whenever you are using it and it can connect with the system as, uh, as the APIs are evolving. Okay. The apps are engaging. I also already, sorry, reliable. Reliability means that whenever the network goes off and comes back on again, there is a certain thing that apps are now able to do. So for instance, if you go offline and come back online, the app should be able to recognize it and then can proceed further. The app should also work offline so the users can see what they browsed earlier. For instance, if you're talking about medium.com, so if you are browsing different articles, a PWF of medium should really help the users who want to see their articles again, even if there's no internet. So it's really helpful in that way, being a web app. Uh, and the engaging part was uh, already explained, push notifications, immersive experience. The question now is why? Why do we really need a PWA? Why do we need a desktop PWA? That is the question that you may have. 
uh, there's a uh, statistics report that shows how the people use different devices. So the green line is of tablet, the orange one is of phone, the blue one is of desktop. So you can see that the desktop usage of PWAs is scattered throughout the day. It's from late night to the prime time. So PWAs on desktop is really important for applications like utilities. For instance, if you have a reminder application, the people would rather have it on their desktop rather than on a web application. Same goes for any, any application that shows different times for different time zones, like New York, whatever country you are interested in. You could have the PWA running at the side and then you can see it whenever you want rather than going to Chrome and switching tabs, okay? The news about PWA is that starting Chrome 73, you are now able to run PWAs on almost all of the operating systems. So you have the Linux support, you also have the support for Windows, and recently from 73, they <coughs> added the support for Mac OS X, so you can also install applications on your desktop. There are some design considerations that you have to think when you are developing a PWA. So we'll talk about that really fast. First of all, when you run an application as a PWA, it has the app-like field. So if you see the header at the very top, you can see that there is the close button, the minimize button, and then the expand button. If you're running it on Windows, you will see the minimize button, the maximize button, and the close button as well. So you can theme your title bar from your application, like from your code, what color of the title bar would be there, okay? So you can think of different theming considerations when creating a PWA. So this is an app, Care Genie, that uh, me and my team built for a global hackathon that we won um, and it was basically named as the innovation winner for the hackathon. Anyways, so the app menu, the app also has a menu at the very right so you can open it and you can uninstall the app if you want and do other options as well. So it really feels like a, a really good uh, experience for the end users. You can theme the header as I said based on the color. So in this picture you can see that I've themed it exactly based on the application's header. So you can also do that. Okay, we have the title bar at the very top, this section which is highlighted. We have the title bar buttons at the left on Windows, it's on the right. So you can also see that with the text of PWAs. And the, one of the design considerations that I talked about was responsive design. So we also had this uh, built with responsive design on desktop, it looks like this. On tablets, it looks like this. If you go smaller, it changes to this. And then finally on mobile, it looks like this. This is also valid for PWAs, why? Because the user may just, you know, um, uh, make the width smaller and put it on the side and then work with his uh, other applications. So prompt to the user of installing the application. From recent updates of Chrome, previously they used to show you a message of adding the app to your home screen if, you're, if you have used Chrome, okay? But now they basically give a prompt to you uh, to the coder or to the developer and you can or the developer can decide when to show the prompt okay so you can also programmatically show like if uh, you you don't have to show um, the add to home screen right when the app launches you can show it on a particular experience let's say if the user came and let's say if you have a financial application they just went through and um, you know finalized their order and now they have uh, gone towards the checkout screen and now they have plan to give their credit details. Now you can pro potentially uh, tell them, you know, add to, car, add to home or something. So what we did, what I did recently was, uh, I basically added the code here. So this app is live, I'm gonna share the link with you so you can also try that right now if you have the latest Chrome. Uh, and what we do is we uh, have this button add to home. When you click on it, it shows you a pop-up through which you can install the application in your phone. Uh, sorry, on your desktop. And Chrome also helps you in a lot of ways. If you talk about Android, and if you open this application on Android, obviously you have the add to home uh, button at the very top, but you also get this, uh, this pop-up at the very bottom that says add the app to your home screen. And this will add the application within your app launch, okay? Which will really help you. So it goes like this, you click on this, it shows this model, you click add, and then it goes towards your screen. I have a little demo of uh, a progressive web app with uh, Angular. So the application Care Genie was built using Angular. Anyone wants to see that? How many of you want to see that? Okay, there's only one, uh, one condition. You all have to shout Angular is the best at the count of three. <laughs> 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 
symbol. How many of you are not uh, agreeing with this? One, two, three. Okay, you can go home, no problem. Okay, okay just kidding. So um, I can show the demo if I, I have time, but later. Okay. So what's next? Sorry? This is martial law, yeah. No, uh, we all, especially the Angular developers, we are like, you know, all frameworks are good, there's no hatred, you know, we are like brothers. So there's no problem with that. So Chrome is constantly improving with the PWAs, and uh, there are a lot of things which are coming next. So for instance, there is Omnimox badging. There's also the badge for launch icon. For instance, if you got uh, some update for the user, like, and you don't want to show notifications right on the face of the user, you can allow the app to show a badge icon like you have in your mobile applications, right? And the user would know that there's something within the app for them, so they can interact with that. Uh, they're also working on the link capturing stuff, which means that if you open an app from your browser and you already have a PWA installed within your machine, the browser would actually open the app, the PWA, instead of going to the browser. So they are also working on that. Um, I'm not sure about the keyboard shortcuts, to be honest. Uh, I did not read up much about, about that. These are some resources which will help you understand about PWAs. You can also create your own PWAs and experiment with them. You can also work with service workers for caching. You can also work with push notifications. You can also work with App Shell to display the information uh, shortly, even when there's no JavaScript or uh, no network. Um, and you can also see, you know, adding push notifications to the web app. All of these resources uh, were picked because they are very good. So you can go through these and learn more about PWS.